Hey everyone, welcome to the TypeScript tutorial. In this tutorial, we will cover everything you need to know about TypeScript. TypeScript is an object-oriented and strongly typed programming language, which is superset of JavaScript. TypeScript code is converted to JavaScript, which can be executed anywhere JavaScript is supported. Let's look at today's agenda. We'll first understand what is TypeScript, followed by which we'll look at the TypeScript tutorial. Then we will see the difference between JavaScript versus TypeScript, followed by which we will understand some of the concepts in TypeScript generics. Then we will see how to interface TypeScript with React, with Node.js, and with Express tutorial. Then we will look at some of the advanced TypeScript concepts, followed by which we will create a real-time chat application project using TypeScript, JavaScript, and Node.js. And at last, we will look at TypeScript interview questions, which will help you crack any TypeScript interview at ease. But before we begin, make sure you have subscribed to our YouTube channel and clicked on the bell icon, so you never miss an update from Simply Learn. So without any further ado, let's get started. What is TypeScript? TypeScript is object-oriented and strongly typed programming language, which is superset of JavaScript. TypeScript code is converted to JavaScript, which can be executed anywhere JavaScript is supported in a browser or Node.js and any other application. TypeScript was designed by Anders Hijelsberg at Microsoft. The limitations of JavaScript for the development of large-scale application at the Microsoft and among its external customers led to the creation of TypeScript. Due to the difficulty of working with the complicated JavaScript code, there was demand for custom tooling to make developing JavaScript components easier. TypeScript is JavaScript with some additional features. To support a strong interaction with your editor, TypeScript adds additional syntax to JavaScript. TypeScript is a scripting language that understands JavaScript and uses type inference to provide powerful capabilities without the need for additional code. Why TypeScript? Compilation JavaScript is an interpreted language. There is no need to compile it. As a result, it must be run to ensure that it is genuine. If there is an error, that implies you write all the code to find out an output. As a result, you will have to spend hours looking for the faults in the code. So, error checking is provided via the TypeScript transpiler. If TypeScript detects any syntax mistakes, it will compile the code and generate compilation errors. This aids in the detection of mistakes prior to the execution of the script. TypeScript provides an optional type system for JavaScript code. When a client doesn't have a value for a parameter, he can pass a null. Optional arguments are features of TypeScript. We can declare some arguments in the function optional by utilizing optional parameter features so that the client is not necessary to supply a value to optional parameters. Strong static typing. JavaScript does not have a powerful static typing system. Thus the TLS. TypeScript comes with an optional static typing and type inference system. The TLS, that is a TypeScript language service, can deduce the type of variable defined with no type based on its value. Supports object-oriented programming, such as classes, interfaces, inheritance, and other object-oriented programming principles are supported by TypeScript. TypeScript supports type definitions. Existing JavaScript libraries can use TypeScript type definitions. External JavaScript libraries are defined in TypeScript definition files. As a result, these libraries can be included in TypeScript code. Now let us look at the difference between TypeScript versus JavaScript. TypeScript is an object-oriented programming language, whereas JavaScript is a scripting language. And TypeScript supports static typing, whereas JavaScript does not support static typing. Errors can be found and corrected during compile time. In JavaScript, errors can be found only during the runtime as it is an interpreted language. There is a concept for ES3, ES4, ES5, and ES6 in TypeScript, whereas no support for compiling additional 
ES3, ES4, ES5 or ES6 features in JavaScript. Functions can have optional parameters in TypeScript, whereas this feature is not possible in JavaScript. Converted into JavaScript code to be understandable for browsers in TypeScript. In JavaScript, this can directly be used in browsers. In TypeScript, proper build setup is required for static type definitions. No build setup is required in JavaScript. Now let us look at the features of TypeScript. TypeScript supports other JavaScript libraries. TypeScript is a new Microsoft language that is highly typed superset of JavaScript with support for object-oriented programming and other current features like decorators. Because browsers and nodes comprehend JavaScript, TypeScript compiles to JavaScript. TypeScript is portable. TypeScript is cross-browser, cross-device and cross-platform. It can run in any environment that supports JavaScript. TypeScript, unlike its competitors, does not require dedicated virtual machine or a specific runtime environment to run. TypeScript is superset of JavaScript. It's a strong syntactical superset of JavaScript with the addition of optional static typing. TypeScript is a large-scale application development language that transcompiles to JavaScript. TypeScript is static and TypeScript is object-oriented language. When a client doesn't have a value for a parameter, he can pass null. Optional arguments are a feature of TypeScript. We, when it comes to object-oriented programming with JavaScript, JavaScript shines because of the class keyword. It makes object-oriented programming look quite similar to programming in other object-oriented languages like C Sharp or Java. Applications of TypeScript TypeScript can be used to develop JavaScript applications for both client-side and server-side execution. TypeScript can be deployed instead of JavaScript language since it adds more features and gives error directly with the code. TypeScript is used for building large-scale applications for enterprises. Advantages of TypeScript Highlights error at the compilation time during the time of development. In TypeScript, it runs on any browser or JavaScript engine. TypeScript has a namespace concept by defining a module. TypeScript supports strongly typed or static typing. Disadvantages of TypeScript TypeScript takes a long time to compile the code. TypeScript does not support abstract classes. TypeScript has extra compilation step for converting TypeScript into JavaScript. TypeScript has an overly complicated typing system. Setting up development environment. Firstly, we need to go to node.js official website and install node.js. After installing, go to command prompt and type the function node space hyphen v to check if the node is installed properly. To install TypeScript, run the command npm node package manager install globally TypeScript in the command prompt and this will install TypeScript. So let's jump to the browser and see the installation of node.js and TypeScript. Then we will go to Visual Studio and see the different components like loops, variables, data types with examples. Choose from over 300 in-demand skills and get access to 1,000 plus hours of video content for free. Visit SkillUp by Simply Learn. Click on the link in the description to know more. So to install Node.js, come to the website node.js.org. Here come to the downloads and from here you can install Node.js. Node is an open source server side execution platform for JavaScript code. Node is commonly used for real-time applications like chat, news feeds, and web push notifications because it allows for a persistent connection from browser to the server. Node.js is a JavaScript runtime based on V8 JavaScript engine from Chrome. Node.js is an asynchronous event-driven JavaScript runtime for building scalable network applications. To install for Windows, click on Windows. If you have Mac OS, click on Mac OS to install. 
so i'll click on windows here we go node.js is getting installed since i have already installed in my device i'll cancel it so once the installation is complete and you have installed the node.js let's go to command prompt in the command prompt run the command node hyphen v to check if whether the node.js is installed properly and here it shows the version of node.js installed in our device so here we can see that node is installed properly next we need to install typescript to install typescript we need to run the command npm node package manager install hyphen g globally typescript if you run this command the typescript will be installed the typescript will be installed worldwide with this command this implies that each project you create on your computer can use TypeScript dependencies without having to reinstall the TypeScript package. So after running this, the TypeScript will be installed since I have already installed. I'll clear this. So after installing TypeScript to check if whether the TypeScript is installed properly, to check if the compiler is installed, just type tsc TypeScript compiler space hyphen version. And here you can see the TypeScript compiler of version 4.5.4 is installed. Now that we know how to install Node.js and uh, TypeScript, now we will go to Visual Studio and see the examples. So let us see the different types of variables available in TypeScript. So for variable declaration, TypeScript follows the same rules as JavaScript. Variables can be declared with the commands like variable or we have let and we have constant const so these are the three types of variable declarations available in typescript we'll see them one by one variables can be declared in typescript using the var keyword just like in javascript the scoping rules are identical to those in javascript for example, we can declare a variable of parameter age and it is of the type number which is equal to say 45, something like this. And similarly, we have let. So let is a ECMAScript 6 introduced two new types of variable declarations in JavaScript using the keyword let and const. To solve the issues with variable declarations these additional sorts of variable declarations are also supported by typescript which is a superset of javascript for example we have let say employee name is equal to john similarly we have constant Constant variables are declared in the same way as variable and let variables are. Constant transforms a variable into a constant whose value cannot be changed. The same scoping constraints apply to constant variable as they do to the let variables. For example, we have constant num is equal to 100. something like this next we will look at the different data types in typescript we have different data types like number string boolean array etc so number first we'll look at the number just like javascript typescript supports number data type all numbers are stored as floating point numbers these numbers can be a decimal hexadecimal for example say let first number 
वन टू थ्री सो लेट सेकेंड the third number is equal to this is of the type now we will write octal and don't forget to put colon otherwise it will show an error the fourth Now we will declare the number of type, say binary. So TypeScript supports number data types like the numbers can be stored in floating point numbers or decimal or hexadecimal, octal or binary. So this is basically a number. And this is hexadecimal this is octal and this is binary these are the different number methods in typescript the method two exponential returns the exponential notation in string format two fixed returns the fixed point notation in string format to locate string converts the number into a local specific representation of the number to precision returns a string representation in exponential or fixed point to be specified precision. To string returns the string representation of the number in the specified base. And value of returns a primitive value of the number. Next we have string. The another data type which we have is string. String is an another primitive data type that is used to store text data. String values are surrounded by single quotation marks or double quotation marks. For example, we say declare it let employee name string of the type string is equal to Johnson. So this is of the type string. The different string methods in TypeScript are method character at returns the character at the given index concatenate returns the combination of two or more specified strings index of returns an index of first occurrence of this specified substring from a string and minus one if not found the method replace replaces the masked substring with a new substring and the method split splits the string into substrings and returns an array to uppercase converts all the characters of the string into uppercase. To lowercase converts all the characters of the string into the lowercase. The next type which we have is Boolean. Boolean values are supported by both JavaScript and TypeScript and stored as true or false. Example for Boolean is say let Here note that the boolean with small b is different from the boolean capital B. So the uppercase boolean is an object type whereas the lowercase boolean is a primitive type. It is always recommended to use the primitive type boolean that is the lowercase boolean in the code. Because while JavaScript courses an object to its primitive type, the TypeScript type system does not. The TypeScript treats it like an the object type. The another data type is of the type array. An array is a special type of data type which can store multiple values of different data types sequentially using a special syntax. TypeScript supports array similar to JavaScript. There are two ways to declare an array. One is using the square brackets and the other is using a generic array type. Example.
This is one type to declare with these square brackets. And the other type is to use the generic array type. Both methods produce the same output. Arrays can contain elements of any data types, numbers, strings or even objects. Arrays can be declared and initialized separately. These are the different array methods in TypeScript. We have pop that removes the last element of the array and returns that element. And push adds the new elements to the array and returns the new array length. Sort sorts all the elements of the array. And similarly, we have concat index of copy within fill, shift, splice, unshift, includes, join, last index of, that returns the last index of the element in an array. Similarly, we have slice, to string, and to locate string. Similarly, we have tuple, union, any, void, and never as the data types in TypeScript. Next, we will look at the if statement in TypeScript. An if statement can include one or more expressions which return boolean if the boolean expression evaluates to true. A set of statements is then executed and in if else condition, an if else condition includes two blocks, if block and an else block. If the if condition evaluates to true, then the if block is executed, otherwise the else block is executed. And we also have else if. So the else if statement can be used for if statement. Next, we will see loops in TypeScript. TypeScript supports for loop. The for loop is used to execute a block of code a given number of times, which is specified by a condition. So this is the for loop. The first expression is executed before the for loop starts. And the second expression is the condition for the loop to execute. And the third expression is executed after the execution of every code block. Here in this example, i is equal to 0 declares and initializes a variable. The second condition i is less than 3 checks whether the value of i is less than 3 or not. If it is less, then it exits the loop. The third statement increases the value of i by 1. This loop will execute the block 3 times until the value of i becomes 3. Now that we have seen loops, we'll see the functions in TypeScript. Functions are the primary blocks of any program. Functions are the most important part. Since it is a functional programming language, with functions we can implement the concepts of oops like classes objects, polymorphism and abstraction. Functions ensure that the program is maintainable and reusable and organized into readable blocks. While TypeScript provides the concept of classes and module, functions still are integral part of the language. For example, we have function sum So this is the example of function. Classes in TypeScript. Now let us look at the classes in TypeScript. So in object oriented programming, classes are fundamental entities used to create reusable components. TypeScript has been primarily a functional programming language where inheritance is prototype based. Functions are used to build reusable components. Let us see an example for the classes. Employee name. So we'll create a class employee and we'll provide employee ID. Employee name. So the TypeScript compiler will convert the class to the JavaScript code using the closure. And the constructor is a special type of method which is called when creating an object. In TypeScript, the construction method is always defined with the name constructor.
So in this example, the employee class includes a constructor with the parameter employee ID. In the constructor, members of the class can be accessed using this keyword. Example, this dot employee ID. It is not necessary for every class to have a constructor. First up, what is JavaScript? Now, JavaScript is a powerful client-side scripting language. It is mainly used for enhancing the interaction of a user with the web page. In other words, you can make your web page more lively and interactive with the help of this language. JavaScript is also being used widely in game development, web development, server development, and robotics, among others. So talking about why JavaScript is being used, first up is that it's open source. Next, as discussed earlier, it has excellent user interaction, meaning the scripts are basically written in HTML pages and are executed automatically with embedded JavaScript. Also, JavaScript offers a wide range of libraries and frameworks. Some popular ones are React, Angular, Vue.js, among others. And some other key features of JavaScript include excellent speed, cross-browser compatibility, that is JavaScript code runs on all browsers like Google Chrome, Firefox, Safari, you name it. And lastly, simple things are done simply. It offers simple semantics, allowing a seamless developer experience. Then what exactly is TypeScript? Now, TypeScript is an object-oriented programming language, which is a superset of JavaScript. It's basically JavaScript with other impressive additional features. And all the code written in TypeScript gets compiled to JavaScript ultimately. Now, let's look at some of the key features of TypeScript that make you want to use it. Firstly, it's a superset of JavaScript. As mentioned earlier, TypeScript is a superset of JavaScript. Now, it supports all JavaScript libraries and APIs. In fact, Angular, which is a JavaScript framework that is used to build single-page applications, is completely written in TypeScript. Now, TypeScript uses object-oriented programming concepts. With the increase in code complexity, JavaScript had to fulfill the requirements of object-oriented programming. Hence, TypeScript was introduced to bridge the gap. TypeScript helps with quicker code development, thus improving performance. And lastly, as mentioned earlier, it adds several additional features to JavaScript, making coding excessively easy. Now let's look at some of the advantages of TypeScript over JavaScript. TypeScript always points out the compilation errors at the time of development. Now because of this, at the runtime, the chances of getting errors are very less. However, in case of JavaScript, it's an interpreted language, and all errors are shown during runtime. Next, TypeScript supports static typing. This means that all the variables that are used in your program are basically known during compile time. Now, since this feature is used, it leads to better code completion, type checking, tooling, and refactoring. As mentioned earlier, TypeScript adds a lot of features to JavaScript, right? So TypeScript adds features like interfaces, generics, namespaces, null checking, and access modifiers. And lastly, it provides excellent tooling with IntelliSense, which provides active hints as the code is typed. Moving ahead, I'm sure you must have gathered the differences between the two languages. However, let me just brief them up for you. Firstly, TypeScript is object-oriented language, while JavaScript is a client-side scripting language. Now, TypeScript supports strongly typed and static typing feature, while JavaScript does not support it. In case of TypeScript, errors are highlighted at the time of development, making it easier for codes to run. However, JavaScript makes sure that it highlights errors at runtime. Now, TypeScript code is always converted to JavaScript and then run on browsers, while JavaScript directly runs on browsers. Now, TypeScript supports prototyping, while JavaScript does not support prototyping. Lastly, as mentioned, TypeScript supports modules, generics, 
namespaces, access modifiers, etc. While JavaScript does not support these features. So lastly, which one should you choose? Now, what are the developers around the world using? According to Google Trends, growth in TypeScript has plateaued in the last 12 months, while JavaScript still has a large user base. So with that, you can gather that a lot of developers out there prefer JavaScript over TypeScript. But if you wonder which one suits you better, well, if you're an experienced developer and work on smaller projects, then JavaScript is ideal. But if you prefer a statically typed language and you are working on a new library or a framework, or if you're working in a big project with multiple developers, then TypeScript would be a better option. What is TypeScript generics? TypeScript generics is a tool for creating reusable components in TypeScript. Rather than working with a single data type, it builds a component that can interact with various data kinds. It enables users to consume these components while also using their own kinds. Generics ensure that the software is both adaptable and scalable over time. Type safety is provided via generics without sacrificing performance or efficiency. The type variable in TypeScript is used to denote types and uses generics. Generic functions have the same type as non-generic functions with type arguments specified first, as in function declarations. Why use TypeScript generics? Consider the below code without generics. The identity function is a function that returns whatever is sent in as a parameter. We could either provide the identity function with a specific type or identity function with any type. While the use of any is generic, when we use any, the function accepts any kind for the type of argument. As a result, when function returns, we lose information about what the type was. The only information we have is that any type could be produced if we pass in a string. We need the means to capture the argument type in such a way that we can use it to signify what is being returned as well. We will utilize a type variable here, which is a form of variable that deals with types rather than values. The identity function now has a type variable called type. This type allows us to capture the type of data the user supplies, for example, a number or a string, so that we can use it later. We are going to utilize the type as a return type once more. We can use two methods to invoke generic identity function after writing it. One method is to pass all the parameters to the function, including the type argument. The other method is to utilize type argument inference. Now let us look at the TypeScript generic types. Generic functions have the same type parameters as non-generic functions, with the type parameters listed first as in the function declarations. We can call the generic type parameter in the type by whatever name we like as long as the number of type variables and how they have utilized match. The generic type can also be written as a call signature of an object literal type. TypeScript generic classes A generic class resembles a generic interface in appearance. Following the name of class, generic classes contain a generic type parameter list enclosed in angular brackets. Although this is relatively literal use of the generic number class, you will notice that nothing restricts it to using only the number type. Instead, we may have used string or even more complicated objects. A class type has two sides, a static side and an instance side. Generic classes are only generic on the instance side, not on the static side. Hence, static members can't use the class type parameters while working with them. Although this is relatively literal use of the generic number class, you will notice that nothing restricts it to using only the number type. Instead, we may have used string or even more complicated objects. Putting the type parameter on the class itself, like the interface, ensures that all of the class's property functions with the same type. TypeScript Generic Constraints TypeScript generic types allow you to work with any data type. We can, however, use constraints to limit it to a specific types. 
a type parameter can be declared that is limited by another type parameter. For instance, in this case, we would like to retrieve a property from an object based on its name. We will put a constraint between two types to ensure that we are not obtaining a property that does not exist on the object. Now let us jump into Visual Studio Code and understand TypeScript generics more better. So here we are in Visual Studio Code. The prerequisite is we need to install Node.js and we need to install TypeScript. So let's get started. Let's call a function. Function identity. Identity function is a function that returns whatever is sent in as a parameter. We could either provide the identity function with a specific type or with any type. So this is the identity function with specific type. So if we had to write the same in the identity function with the specific type. So what we'll do, we'll write it with the specific type. So to write it with any type, what we have to do is we'll write any in place of string. So while the use of any is generic, when we use any, the function accepts any kind of the type of the argument. As a result, when the function returns, we lose the information about what that type was. The only information we have is that any type could have produced if we pass in a string. So we are passing of the type string here and maybe we can pass this type as number as well instead of string. So I can make this function generic by passing the type any. But this will lose information about what type was passed. So for that we need the means to capture the argument type in such a way that we can use it to signify what is being returned as well. So we will utilize a type variable here which is of the form variable that deals with the types rather than the values. So for that we will write the code as we will create a function identity so here the identity function now has a type variable called the type this type allows us to capture the type of data the user supplies for example a number or a string so that we can use it later we are going to utilize a type as a return type once more so we can use one of the two methods to invoke the generic identity function after writing it so i have written a few lines of code with generic type function So here I have written a few lines of code. In this example, the type variable t is specified with the function in the angle brackets get array. So the type variable t also is used to specify the type of the arguments and then return the value. This means that the data type which will be specified at the time of a function call will also be the data type of the arguments and of the return value. So we call generic function get array. And the pass numbers array, the strings array. For example, calling the function as get array number, and we have passed the numbers as 16 and decimal number 2.0 and 55. This will replace t with the number, and so the type of the arguments and the return value will be the number array. In the same way, for get array string, we have passed the values as hello world. The type arguments and the return value will be a string array. So now the compiler will show an error. If you try to add a string in number array or a number in string array, thus we get the type checking advantage. So it is not recommended, but we can also call a generic function without specifying the type variable. The compiler will use the inference to set the value of t on the function based on the data type of the argument values. Now let us run this code and check. So let us go to the terminal and let us first run the command type script.cmd and the file name type.ts. Enter. Now let us run the file node type.js and here we go. It's showing the number array as 
36 and 400 we have pushed two new values one for the number array that is value 400 and for the string array hello typescript what is react react is a javascript library for creating user interfaces that is declarative efficient and customizable react allows to build complicated user interfaces out of components which are small independent pieces of code. React was first open sourced in 2013 by Facebook and has since become one of the most popular libraries in the front end world. With frameworks like Redux, React can simply be extended to integrate functionality like routing and state management patterns. Features of React. React is an open source library and is developed by Facebook. React apps are fast, flexible, modular, and scalable. React is powerful JavaScript libraries that creates interactive interfaces. Popular libraries of React are Redux, Material Design, and Jest. Redux helps manage state in JavaScript. Redux is the most popular of all React libraries because it easily tracks the state as the application size grows. React has a robust developer community and variety of libraries. React is declarative and component based. Declarative views make the React code more predictable and easier to debug. And React is component based, that is React letters build encapsulated components that manage their own state and compose them to make complex UIs. Advantages of using TypeScript with React In a React project, TypeScript allows us to write HTML code directly. TypeScript delivers superior intelligence and code completion for JSX when used with React. JavaScript XM is abbreviated as JSX. When using IDEs like Visual Studio, Visual Studio Code, Autumn, WebStorm, Eclipse and others, TypeScript comes in handy. This allows better development by improving autocomplete and snippet generation. TypeScript has code that is easy to read and understand. TypeScript is statically typed language. The distinction between statically and dynamically typed programming languages is when type checking occurs. Variables in static language are type checked. While creating React app, complex type definitions can be defined as interfaces in TypeScript. This is useful when you wish to use a complex type in the application, such as an object with multiple properties. Microsoft supports TypeScript, an open source programming language. Millions of developers all over the world enjoy and use it. This implies that if you get stuck while learning or using TypeScript, you can easily obtain help and answers on the community portal. We can integrate TypeScript into our existing React projects. For this, we can configure the TypeScript compiler. Installing and configuring TypeScript and React. Before we install TypeScript, we need to install Node.js. Go to the Node.js official website and you can install Node.js from there. Once you install Node.js, go to the command prompt and run this command npm install g TypeScript. This command is used to install TypeScript globally. Once you have installed TypeScript, to check if the TypeScript is installed properly, run the command tsc TypeScript compiler hyphen v to check the version of the TypeScript compiler. Next, we need to install React. For installing React and creating a React project, go to the command prompt and run this command. npx create react app. This command will create a simple folder structure 
of the application then install all the necessary modules and get the project up and running for you. First of all we need to install node.js. To install node.js go to the official website of node node.js.org. Go to the downloads. In downloads here you can install the node.js. If you have windows, if you have mac os you can install it from here. So I have windows so I'll install windows. Since I have already installed so I'll cancel it. So once you have installed node.js then go to the command prompt. In command prompt we need to install the typescript. To install the typescript run the command npm that is node package manager install hyphen g. g stands for installing globally and then typescript. What this command does is it installs the typescript globally. Run this command. Once you run this command, the TypeScript will be installed. Since I have already installed TypeScript, I'll cancel it. So after you have installed TypeScript, to check if the TypeScript is installed properly, run the command TypeScript compiler tsc space hyphen hyphen b and press enter and this will show the version. And this will show the version of the TypeScript installed. So I have version 4.5.4 installed in my device. So after this, to get started with the project after successful installation of Node.js and TypeScript, let us create a new folder. To create a new folder, type the command make directory and we'll name the folder as TypeScript hyphen React. So enter. So we have created the new folder. Next we'll change the directory to the folder which we created. So cd to ts react. So after this we need to initiate the project. So to initiate the project we will run the command npm init. It is asking for package name just click enter and click enter then is this okay click s yes. after this what we need to do is create react app so to create react app run the command npx space create react app and enter. So this command will create a simple folder structure for your application and then install all the necessary modules and get your project up and running for you. So this is the project folder which I have already created. I have the VS code folder wherein I have settings.json file in this. Then I have installed all the node modules. Then I have the source folder. In source folder, I have app.tsx file, counter.tsx, index.html declarations, index.tsx file. To install webpack, just run the command npm install webpack space webpack hyphen cli in the terminal. This will install the webpack. So I'll show you a simple hello world or hello everyone program. So in app.tsx, We'll just type hello everyone and we'll give the color as green and align the text at the center. Import Since we have imported the counter file, so in counter file, we'll just type it subscribe to simply learn with text align in the center and with the color red. So we'll just run this. Here we go, we have the message hello everyone and subscribe to simply learn. What is Node.js? Node.js is an open source server side execution platform for JavaScript code. Node.js is a JavaScript runtime based on the version 8 JavaScript engine from Chrome. Node is an asynchronous event driven JavaScript runtime for building scalable network applications. 
Although Node.js is excellent for developing server-side apps, it lacks several current features such as type checking. It can also be difficult to manage a Node.js code base. Node is commonly used for real-time applications like chat, news feeds, and web push notifications because it allows for a persistent connection from the browser to the server. The current coding methods such as static typing and type checking are supported by TypeScript. It's designed to create complex and high-level applications. That's why having TypeScript as a primary language for supporting Node.js capabilities would be ideal. This also allows us to develop server-side apps with rigorous type checking, avoiding runtime errors and other TypeScript benefits while maximizing Node.js capabilities. Now let us see how to set up the development environment for TypeScript with Node.js. The prerequisites are we need to have TypeScript installed in our device and Node.js. To install Node.js, go to the official website. Go to node.js.org and go to downloads. So here you can see we have Node.js for different browsers for Windows, Mac OS and source code. So go to Windows if you have Windows PC and click on install. Click on Windows and here you can see it is getting installed. Since I have already installed in my device, I'll cancel it. So once you have installed, go to the command prompt and just enter node.v to check if node is installed properly. So here you can see the node is installed in my system. To install TypeScript, just run the command npm node package manager install globally TypeScript. Just run this command and TypeScript will be installed. Since I have already installed TypeScript in my device, we cancel this. So once you have installed TypeScript, to check if TypeScript is installed or not, to see if the compiler is installed, just run the command TypeScript compiler space version. Here you can see it will show the version of TypeScript compiler. So now that we have installed both TypeScript and Node.js, let's see an example program for TypeScript with Node.js. So let's jump into Visual Studio Code. One more prerequisite is we need to have Visual Studio Code installed. So create a new folder and create a new project. So we'll run an example program. We'll create a function. We'll write a program to add two numbers. So sum number one, comma number two. will return number one and number two console.log will call the function sum and will provide the arguments so we'll provide the value nine comma five so let's save and run this program first we'll run typescript.cmd type.ts command then we'll hit our then we'll run node and the file name here you can see it's showing the value it's showing the output as 14 9 plus 5 the sum of 9 plus 5 is 40. So we'll delete this and write another program. 
to show a hello message or a welcome message so we'll create a function we'll name the function as welcome message and we'll return let user is equal to simply learn console log we'll call the function welcome and pass so here we go we'll save this and check whether we have an error so here we go it's showing welcome to simply learn what is express.js express.js is a node.js web application framework that is free and open source it is used to quickly and easily design and create web apps. Web applications are applications that can be run through a web browser because Express.js simply requires JavaScript. Programmers and developers may create web applications and APIs with little effort. TJ Holovechuk created Express, which is now maintained by Node.js and several open source contributors. To construct our applications, Express provides a simple interface. It gives us the resources we need to create our app. It's adaptable because there are a lot more modules on NPM that can be directly integrated into Express. Let us look at some of the features of Express.js. Server-side development is made easier with Express. It's possible to create single page, multi page, and hybrid web apps with Express.js. Express enables middlewares to respond to HTTP requests to be configured. Middleware is primarily responsible for the orderly structure of Express.js various functions. Express.js has a comprehensive routing mechanism that uses URLs to maintain the state of a web page. It establishes a routing table that is used to carry out various operations based on the HTTP method and URL. Express.js has templating engines that enable developers to create dynamic content for web pages by creating HTML templates on the server. Express.js simplifies debugging by offering a debugging mechanism that can pinpoint a particular area of the web application that is causing problems. Advantages of Express.js Express.js makes developing Node.js web applications quickly and easily. Express.js is simple to set up and personalize. It allows to define application routes using HTTP methods and URLs. Express.js includes a number of middleware modules that can be used to execute additional requests and responses activities. It is simple to interface with a variety of template engines including Jade, Vash and EJS. It allows us to specify a middleware for handling errors. Express is used to make a REST API server and it's simple to provide your application static files and resources. Databases such as MongoDB, Redis and MySQL are simple to connect to Express.js. Now let us look at the demo on TypeScript Express. The prerequisites are we need to have an editor, maybe Visual Studio Code. Then we need to have Node.js installed 
and a package manager installed such as npm or yarn so we'll jump into visual studio code here i have created a new folder named express typescript then we will go to the terminal Next, we'll run the command npx typescript hyphen in it will initialize typescript. Next, to initialize the node.js application, we'll run the command yarn in it. We, once we have initialized the node.js application, we just need to click enter. Just click enter. And we have successfully saved the package.json file. Next, we need to make a new directory. We'll make a new directory source. Next, we'll install the touch CLI globally with the command npm install. touch CLI so after installing this we'll run the command touch source inside the source folder we'll create the file app.ts So here you can see we have created the file app.ts inside the source folder. So after this, we will install TypeScript. To install TypeScript, run the command yarn add TypeScript node dev TypeScript hyphen d. So after this, we need to install Express. To install Express, run the command yarn space add Express. Next, we need to add node modules and Express modules. For that, run the command yarn add type slash node. Type slash express. So let us now go to the app.ts file and run the code. We'll close this. So I'll copy paste a few lines of code here wherein I have imported express module. The constant app creates an express function and we have express.json and we have returning a message hello world. So we'll save this and we are running it on the local host with port number 3000. So we'll save this and run it to run it we'll just run the command yarn def
so application is listening at the local host 3000 so we'll copy this and open in the browser here we go it's showing the message hello world similarly we have routing like this example with app.get and app.host the app object provides a collection of functions that attach callbacks to http requests made to define destinations and other http methods such as post put patch and delete can also have callbacks attached to them the router object is another approach to set up routing you can call the get put and patch and delete methods on a router object just like you do on a app object and similarly we have request and response so the request object holds the information about http request including headers query strings and parameters when when an http request is received the response object represents the http response that the application provides Similarly for response, the send method is the most significant one. It sends the HTTP response to the client so that it can be received. The function accepts a variety of data kinds including strings, objects, arrays and buffers. The send method finishes the response process with data, but you can alternatively use the end function to end it without any data. The request and response objects are accessible to middleware function. It can join the request response cycle at any point. A third argument that middleware receives is the next function. The get callback which processes the HTTP get request that we wrote in this example is an example of middleware. It's highly unique middleware that only works in one situation they can also carry out more general duties we'll first look at type assertions type assertion is similar to type cast in other languages but it does not do any additional verification or restructuring it has no effect on runtime and is only used by the compiler typescript expects that you the programmer have completed the necessary and specific checks so there are two types of assertions one is the as syntax and the other one is the angle bracket syntax both versions are identical choosing one over the other is primarily a matter of preference however only as style assertions are allowed when combining typescript with jsx type aliases type aliases give a type a new name Type aliases are similar to interfaces in that they can be used to name primitives, unions, tuples and any other kind that you would have to define by hand otherwise. Aliasing doesn't truly create a new type. Instead, it gives the type a new name. Aliasing a primitive isn't very useful. However, it can be used for documentation purposes. Type aliases like interfaces can be general. All we have to do is add type parameters and neutralize them on the right side of the alias declaration. This is the syntax for type aliases. Type generics. Type generics is a tool for creating reusable components in TypeScript. Rather than working with a single data type, it builds a component that can interact with various data kinds. It enables users to consume these components while also using their kinds. Generics ensure that the software is both adaptable and scalable over time. Consider the below code without generics. The identity function is a function that returns whatever is sent in as a parameter. You could either provide the identity function with a specific type or the identity function with any type. While the use of any is generic, when you use any, the function accepts any kind for the type of argument. As a result, when the function returns, you lose the information about what the type was. The only information you have is that any type could be produced if you pass a string. 
So for that we need the means to capture the argument type in such a way that we can use it to signify what is being returned as well. We will utilize a type variable here which is a form of variable that deals with the types rather than values. The identity function now has a type variable called type. This type allows you to capture the type of data the user supplies. For example, a number or a string so that you can use it later. You are going to utilize type as the return type once more. Next we will look at the in operator. The in operator serves as a type narrowing expression. The true branch narrows to types that have an optional or required property n and the false branch narrows to the types that have an optional or missing property n for a n in x expression. Where n is a string literal or a string literal type and x is the union type. Below is an example code for in operator. Null and undefined are two special types in TypeScript that have the values null and undefined respectively. They are not particularly useful much like void. Null and undefined are subclasses of all other types by default. That means you can give things like number, null and undefined values. When the strict null checks flag is set, however null and undefined can also be assigned to unknown any and the respective types. This helps you avoid a lot of frequent errors. You can use them as union type string null and undefined if you want to send in either a string null or a undefined. Next we have index types. Using index types we can get the compiler to check code that utilizes dynamic property names by using index types. A typical JavaScript pattern for example is to select a subset of an object's property. We may build and use this function in TypeScript using the index type query and index access operators. Let us jump into Visual Studio code and understand index types more better. So consider this code as an example for index types. Here key of t the index type query operator for any type t P of t is the union of known public property names of t. And t of k, the indexed access operator, is the second operator. The type syntax reflects the expression syntax in this case. And t of k can be like index type queries, be used in generic environment, which is where its truly potential can be seen. All we have to do now is make sure that the type variable k extends key of t. In get property o, t and property name k, so that means of property name. The compiler will initiate the actual type of the key after you return t of k result. Therefore, the return type of get property will change depending on which property you request. Index signature. Index signature interact with the key of and the t of k. The type of an index signature argument must be either a string or a number. If your type has a string index signature, key of t will be a string or a number. Because in JavaScript you can access an object property using either a string or number. t of string is simply the index signature type. Below is the syntax for index signature. If you have a type with number index signature, e of t will just be a number. Map types. Taking an existing type and making each of its property optional is a typical undertaking. Because this happens frequently enough in JavaScript, TypeScript has a new feature called map types that allows you to define new types based on existing ones. The new types turn each property in the old type in the same way in a map type. For example, make all the properties optional or the read-only type. It's important to note that this syntax refers to the type rather than a member. You can use an intersection type to add more members. This is the simplest map type and its parts. The syntax is similar to the index signature 
with a for in the middle. There are three sections in total. The type variable k is assigned to each property one by one. The literal union of string, the names of the properties to iterate over are stored in keys. And third one, the properties type is a result. Next, we have conditional types. Based on the condition given as a type relationship test, a conditional type chooses one of the two alternative types. When t can be assigned to u, the type is x, and when it can't, the type is y. Because the condition depends on one or more type variable, a conditional type t extends u. So x is to y and is either resolved to x or y or delayed. Whether to resolve to x or y or to differ, when t or u contains type variables, is determined by whether the type system has enough information to conclude that t is always assignable to u. In conditional types, we also have distributive conditional type. That is a conditional type in which the check type is bare type parameter. During instantiation, distributive conditional types are automatically distributed over union types. Supporting libraries from node modules. TypeScript includes a series of declaration files to guarantee that TypeScript and JavaScript support works well right out of the box. And TypeScript includes a series of declaration files. However, there are two drawbacks to using these declaration files with TypeScript. One drawback is since while upgrading TypeScript, we must also deal with the changes of TypeScript built in declaration files, which can be difficult when the DOM APIs change so regularly. And the other drawback is that Customizing these files to meet your needs and the demands of project dependencies is difficult. So to overcome this, a new feature like types was added that allow us to override a specific built-in library. Then we can update TypeScript and lock the file in dependency management, ensuring that it utilizes the same version of DOM types. As a result, we can update the types on our own schedule. Then with, then with TypeScript 4.5, we can update TypeScript and lock file in our dependency management. Awaited type and promise improvements. The awaited type is the new utility introduced in TypeScript. This type is intended to represent activities such as await in async functions and the then method on promises, notably the way they recursively unwrap promises. Existing APIs such as JavaScript, built in like promise.all, promise.race, and others can benefit from awaited type. In fact, some of promise.all inference concerns provided as foundation for awaited. Promise.all combines certain traits with awaited to produce far superior inference results. Tail recursion elimination on conditional types. When TypeScript identifies potential infinite recursion or any type expansion that take a long time and damage your editor experience, it often fails. As a result, TypeScript includes heuristics to ensure that it doesn't run off the tracks while deconstructing an indefinitely deep type or working with types that provide a lot of intermediate results. Let's jump into Visual Studio Code and look at an example. The trim left type, for example, removes spaces from the beginning of string like type. When provided a string type with space at the beginning, trim left returns the reminder of the string to the user. This type is handy, but it will throw an error if a string contains more than 50 leading spaces. This is problematic because these types are frequently used in modeling operations on strings, such as parsers for URL routers. To make matters worse, a more powerful type useful generates more type installations, resulting in even additional input length restrictions. Trim left is a return in such a way that it is tail recursive on one branch. When it calls itself again, it returns the result instantly and does nothing with it. 
because these types don't require any intermediate outcomes. They can be constructed more rapidly and without activating many of TypeScript built-in type recursion heuristics. Next we have assert signatures. The assert signature features allow us to construct functions that operate as type guards as a side effect instead of returning their boolean result explicitly. Consider a below example. After a search string, TypeScript has no way of knowing if you have guaranteed the type of input. To prevent this, most people just make the parameter input string, which is fine. But it also moves the type checking problem somewhere. And in circumstances where you just want to fail hard, having this option is beneficial. If this function ever returns, TypeScript can filter the type of input to string exactly like it would be if it were inside an if block with a type card. To make this safe, the assert function must either give an error or not return at all if the assert assertion isn't true. And lastly, we have recursive type aliases. The ability to recursively reference type aliases has been limited. The reason for which is because each type aliases must be capable of substituting itself for whatever it aliases. Because this isn't always possible, the compiler rejects some recursive aliases. Interfaces can be recursive, but their expressiveness is limited and type aliases cannot. That involves combining the two, creating a type alias and extracting the type's recursive operations into interfaces. Interfaces can be recursive, but their expressiveness is limited and type aliases cannot. That involves combining the two, creating a type alias and extracting the type's recursive portions into interfaces. It's effective. By establishing an interface, users may write what was practically the same code. TypeScript has no trouble working with the interfaces and other object types because they introduce a level of in direction and their whole structure does not need to be eagerly built up. However, many found the workaround of introducing the interface to be inconvenient. And there was nothing wrong with the old version of value or array that used array directly in concepts. This is the chat application where we have two users and from the user one we will send the message hello and the user 2 will receive it and from the user 2 will send the message hi and the user 1 receives it so this is uh, basically a simple chat application how we can create how are you so this is basically a simple chat application which we can create So in this video, we will learn to make this chat application from the scratch. But before we begin, make sure you have subscribed to our YouTube channel and clicked on the bell icon. So you never miss an update from Simply Learn. Watch the video till the end so that you don't miss out anything. So without wasting any further time, let's get started. First of all, we will create a new folder. So I'll go to my D drive and I'll create a new folder. I'll name the folder as chat app so after creating this new folder so we will go to visual studio code open a new window in new window we will open the folder which we created we created the folder in d drive we will first create the user interface to create the user interface for that we need to create a new file called index.html so i have successfully created the new file index.html so we will change the title we will name the title as io chat
Next, after this, we'll open the link. Before this, we should know what is CDN. A CDN is a network of servers that distributes content from an origin server throughout the world by catching content close to where each end user is accessing the internet via a web enabled device. The content they request is first stored on the origin server and is then replicated and stored elsewhere as needed. So we will use Bootstrap CDN and Query CDN for our project. So we will use the link tag. The link element allows authors to link their document to other resources. We will click on the link. So for this, to get the Bootstrap CDN, we will go to the browser and type Bootstrap CDN. So we'll copy this link for Bootstrap CDN and we'll paste it here. Bootstrap is the most popular CSS framework for developing responsive and mobile first websites. Bootstrap 5 is the newest version of Bootstrap and Bootstrap is free open source CSS framework directed at responsive mobile first front end web development. It contains CSS and JavaScript based on design templates for forms, buttons, navigation, and other interface components. After this, next we need jQuery CDN. Next we will next we'll get the jQuery CDN and write it in the script tags. So I'll select script. The script element allows authors to include dynamic script and data blocks in their documents. The element does not represent content for the user. To get the CDN for jQuery, go to the browser and just type jQuery CDN. And open the first link. Click on uncompressed and copy this. Go back to the Visual Studio code and paste it. So after this is done, jQuery is fast, small, and feature-rich JavaScript library. It makes things like HTML document transversal and manipulation, event handling, animation, and AJAX much simpler with an easy-to-use API. That works across a multitude of browsers with a combination of versatility and extensibility. So after this, we'll take one more script tag, and this time, we will include the we will take one more script tag inside this script tag we will enter the client set socket.io web api that will work inside the browser you can go to the browser and search socket.io you will get all the information related to socket.io so just go and type socket.io here just go to the browser and type socket.io and on this website socket.io you have all the documentation and all the details to get started with socket.io so you can go through the socket.io here so in the script tags I'll write source and just type socket dot io slash socket dot io dot js
so after this we'll create a new div tag so the div element has no special meaning at all it represents its children it can be used with the class language and title attributes to mark up semantics common to a group of consecutive elements so inside this div we'll create a new class new class container so class is basically a space separated list of classes of the element classes allow css and javascript to select and access specific elements via the class selector or functions like the method document get elements by class name so after this we'll create another div class row inside this we will create one more div class this column medium for this class is used when the device size is medium or greater than 768 pixel and the maximum width of the container is 720 pixel and you want the width equal to four columns that is when we use this function column medium 4 next we'll create another div class well so after this we will provide the heading h3 the h3 element represents a section heading so in this we will provide the heading as online users you can change the headings whatever you want to but i'll keep it as online users so after this we'll create an unordered list in this class list group and id So after this, we'll create a one more div. In this div class, we'll provide column medium of size eight. This column medium eight stands for large columns. Well, then we'll create a div, another div class chat. Where ID is equal to chat. Then I'll create a form.
the this form element represents a collection of form associated elements some of which can represent editable values that can be submitted into a server or a processing our form id is equal to form message form This will create a diff class form group. Next, we'll create the label so label element represents a caption in a user interface the caption can be associated with specific form control known as label elements label control either using for attribute or by putting the form control inside the label element itself so use the label element inside that we'll write enter message next we'll create a text area use the label text area so inside text area we'll create a class form control and id message so text area element represents a multi line plain text edit control for the elements raw value the contents of the control represent the controls default value after the text area just right then we will create an input element input element of will assign a type submit class button value send message in double quotes so this input are basically it represents a type data field usually with a form control to allow the user to edit the data so we have finished with the user interface we'll just save this and run it in the browser right click and open with live server so here we go we have created the html but we we will now create assign few css elements we just need the margin top for the body so we'll assign that So we'll create styles element.
The style element allows authors to embed style information in their documents. The style element is one of the several inputs to the styling processing model. The element does not represent content for the user. So in the style, we'll just write this body and we'll assign margin top Thirty pixel. Save this, and we'll go to the browser and just refresh. So till now we have created the user interface. We'll just go to the browser and run this user interface. Just right-click and click on Open with Live Server. Now we will create a new file called server.js and we'll go to the terminal In terminal we will run two commands First of all we need to install socket.io For that we'll run npm and there is one prerequisite we need to have node.js installed in our device so then run the command node package manager npm install socket.io socket.io is a library that enables real-time bidirectional and event-based communication between the browser and the server it consists of a node.js server and a JavaScript client library for the browser. After installing socket.io, then we need to install express. For that, run the command npm install express. Express is a minimal and flexible node.js web application framework that provides a robust set of features for web and mobile applications. After installing socket.io and express, you will get these two files, package.json file and package.log.json. Next, go to the server.js, wherein I will paste few lines of code. In the line 1 creates an express application. The express function is a top level function exported by the express module. Then we have const listen and then we require and socket.io. Then we, ha we have created an variable app express method. Then we have created an variable server. So this server that is we use the module HTTP. So it creates a module HTTP to use the HTTP server and client, we must require HTTP. The HTTP interfaces in Node.js are designed to support many features of the protocol, which have been traditionally difficult to use. In particular, large possible chunk encoded messages. The interface is careful to never buffer entire requests or responses, so the user is able to stream data. Then we have another variable IO where we require socket.io server. And similarly, we are listening in the port 3000. So in port 3000, it starts a server listening for connection. A net dot server can be an TCP or an IPC server depending on what it listens to do. Then we have app.get. Here the request is declared but its value is never read. We have request and response. Then we are routing it on the local host 3000. So in this line we are transferring the file at the given path. So automatically sets the content type response header field. The callback is invoked when the transfer is complete or when an error occurs. Be sure to check request response sent if you wish to attempt responding as the header and some data may be already been transferred. Here we are connecting the client to the server and here we add plug details to the customer array and here we are checking the current connections. And then we 
disconnect from the server using the disconnect function. Next we delete the plug details and the again we show the current connections. Here on the socket dot on we send messages function data and then we console dot log the data. Then we emit the new messages. So then we have written console dot log server is listening. So now we will run this code and check if the server is listening. Now we will check if the server is listening. For that we will run the command node server. And here we go server is listening. Now we will just go and run the local host 3000 on the browser. Go to the new tab and just run local host 3000. And here we go, it's running. And when we come back to the code, we can see it shows one socket connected. So again, if we go and open it in a new browser and just run the local host and go back to the code, it will show two sockets connected. So we are almost done. We just have a small part left out. We'll go to index.html and here. We'll just scroll down and above body, we'll just paste few lines of code. So here basically we are just creating a function to get data form. So we'll get message form and we'll, we are creating variables message and we are creating variables chat. So basically in this line, we will know form between click event handle and then we will prevent default from submission. Next, in this line, we will trap data for text box and call server. Then we'll create clear. Then we will clear the form text box. Then we'll console dot log submitted. So our program is finished. Now we'll just run and check the code. So we'll save this code. Go to the browser. Refresh it. So I have the two browsers. I have opened it in two separate window. We'll just check if the application is working. So we'll send the message hi. And here we go. We have received the message. So we can say hello. So the chat application is working successfully. We'll first look at beginner level interview questions. What is TypeScript? TypeScript is an object-oriented and strongly typed programming language, which is a superset of JavaScript. TypeScript was designed by Anders Hijelsberg at Microsoft. The limitations of JavaScript for developing large-scale applications at Microsoft and among its external customers led to the creation of TypeScript. Because of the difficulty of working with complicated JavaScript code, there was a demand for custom tooling to make developing JavaScript components easier. TypeScript code is converted to JavaScript, which can be executed anywhere JavaScript is supported, in the browser or Node.js or any other application. TypeScript is JavaScript with some additional features. To support a more robust interaction with your editor, TypeScript adds additional syntax to JavaScript. TypeScript is a scripting language that understands JavaScript and uses type inference to provide powerful capabilities without additional code. Explain the features of TypeScript. TypeScript supports other JavaScript libraries. TypeScript is a new Microsoft language that is highly typed superset of JavaScript with support for object-oriented programming and other current features like decorators. Because browsers and Node.js comprehend JavaScript, TypeScript compiles JavaScript. TypeScript is portable. TypeScript is cross-browser, cross-device and cross-platform. It can run in any environment that supports JavaScript. 
TypeScript, unlike its competitors, does not require a dedicated virtual machine or a specific runtime environment to run. TypeScript is superset of JavaScript. It is strongly syntactical that superset of JavaScript with the addition of optional static typing. TypeScript is a large-scale application development language that transcompiles to JavaScript. Existing JavaScript programs are also valid TypeScript programs because TypeScript is a superset of JavaScript. TypeScript is static. When a client doesn't have a value for a parameter, he can pass null. Optional arguments are a feature of TypeScript. You can declare some arguments in the function optional by utilizing optional parameter features so that the client is not necessary to supply a value to optional parameters. Object-oriented language. When it comes to object-oriented programming with JavaScript, TypeScript shines. Because of the class keyword, it makes object-oriented programming look quite similar to programming in other object-oriented languages like C Sharp or Java. What are export and import keywords in TypeScript? Import keyword is used to export declaration. Example, export star from module. And the export keyword is used to export any variable function and type aliases. Below is the example for import keyword and export keyword. Can TypeScript be used for the backend? TypeScript can be generally used for backend applications by using Node.js and having additional safety that the language brings. How to declare a variable in TypeScript? Let and const are the two methods to declare variables. Variable names can contain alphabets and numeric digits. They cannot contain spaces and special characters, except the underscore and the dollar sign. Variable names cannot begin with a digit. Below is the example code, where we have declared a variable with let method and we have declared a variable inside a function. List the applications of TypeScript. TypeScript can be used to develop JavaScript applications for both client-side and server-side execution. TypeScript can be deployed instead of JavaScript language since it adds more features and gives error directly with the code. TypeScript is used for building large-scale applications for enterprises. How can a base constructor be called from a child class? A base class constructor can be called from child class using the super method, as shown in the example. What are getters and setters? Getters and setters intercept access to a member of the object. They give us a way of having finer grain control over how a member access each object. A getter method starts with the keyword get and the setter method starts with the keyword set. What is the purpose of tsconfig.json file? tsconfig.json file is a JSON format file in which we can specify different options to tell the compiler how to compile a given project. This file in the directory indicates that the directory is the TypeScript's project root. List the advantages of TypeScript. TypeScript highlights errors at the compilation time during the time of development. Any browser or JavaScript engine can run TypeScript. It has a namespace concept by defining a module. TypeScript supports strongly typed or static typing. TypeScript has the advantages of being tightly typed or allowing static typing. It may confirm type correctness at the compile time because of static typing. What are REST parameters in TypeScript? When the number of parameters that a function will receive is not known or can vary, we can use REST parameters. We can pass zero or more arguments to the REST parameters. The compiler will create an array of arguments with the REST parameter name. How to compile TypeScript with Visual Studio Code? Visual Studio Code includes TypeScript language support but does not include the TypeScript compiler. We need to install the TypeScript compiler either globally or in your workspace to transpile TypeScript source code to JavaScript. The easiest way to install TypeScript is through Node Package Manager. The Node.js Package Manager, if you have NPM installed, you can install TypeScript globally on your computer by using this command. npm install hyphen g TypeScript. We can test the installed TypeScript by checking the version or help. For this, run the command tsc-version.
List access modifiers supported by TypeScript. TypeScript supports three access modifiers, protected, private, and public. In protected, all class members can access them, but the instance cannot. But in private, it's only accessible by members, whereas in public, it is accessible by members, child classes, and instance of the class. List the disadvantages of TypeScript. The TypeScript takes a long time to compile the code. TypeScript does not support abstract classes and extra compilation step for converting TypeScript into JavaScript. TypeScript has overly complicated typing system. How to debug a TypeScript file? To debug a TypeScript file, a .js source map file is needed to debug the file. Compile the .ts file with the source map flag for generating source map file. Use the command TypeScript TSC space hyphen source map file dot ts source mapping url is equal to file dot js dot map how can we convert a string to a number with typescript in typescript conversion from a string to a number can be done using the following commands parse int method and we have parse float method and number method explain type aliases type aliases give a type a new name Type aliases are similar to interfaces in that they can be used to name primitives, unions, tuples, and any other kinds that you would have to define by hand otherwise. Aliasing doesn't truly create a new type. Instead, it gives that type a new name. Aliasing a primitive isn't very useful. However, it can be used for documentation purposes. Type aliases, like interfaces, can be in general. All we have to do is add type parameters and utilize them on the right side of alias declaration. Below is the syntax for type aliases. What are nullable types in TypeScript? Null and undefined are the two special types in TypeScript that have the values null and undefined respectively. They are not particularly useful, much like void. Null and undefined are subclasses of all other types by default. That means you can give things like number, null, and undefined values. When the strict null checks flag is set, however, null and undefined can only be assigned to unknown, any, and their respective types. The one exception being that undefined is also assignable to void. This helps to avoid a lot of frequent errors. You can use the union type string, null, undefined if you want to send in either a string, null, or undefined. What is in operator in TypeScript? The in operator serves as a type narrowing expression. The true branch narrows to types that have been an optional or required property in, and the false branch narrows to the types that have an optional or missing properties in for a n in x expression as shown in the example below, where n is a string literal or string literal type, and x is a union type. Explain index types in TypeScript. Using index types, we can get the compiler to check code that utilizes the dynamic property names. A typical JavaScript pattern, for example, is to select a subset of an object properties. We may build and use this function in TypeScript using the index type query and indexed access operators. In this example, key of t, the index type query operator. For any type t, key of t is the union of known public property names of t. And t of k, the indexed access operator, is the second operator. The type syntax reflects the expression syntax in this case. t of k can be like index type queries, be used in generic environment, which is where it's truly potential is seen. All you have to do now is make sure that the type variable k extends to k of t. What are map types? TypeScript has a feature called map types that allow you to define new types based on the existing ones. The new type turns each property into the old type in the same way in a map type. It's important to note that this syntax refers to a type rather than a member. You can use an intersection type to add more numbers. As you can see in the example, it is the simplest map type and its parts are type keys and type flags where syntax is similar to the index signatures with four in the middle. There are three sections in total. The type variable k is assigned to each property one by one. 
and the literal union of strings. The name of property is to iterate over the stored in case and properties type as a result. What is meant by contextual typing? When there is a type on one side of the equation but not on the other, the TypeScript compiler finds out the form. We can omit typing on the right side as TypeScript can work it out automatically. This increases the amount of work needed to type code. Distinguish between TypeScript and JavaScript. TypeScript is an object-oriented programming language, whereas JavaScript is a scripting language. TypeScript supports static typing. JavaScript does not support static typing. In TypeScript, error can be found and corrected during a compile time. In JavaScript, errors can be found only during runtime as it is an interpreted language. There is support for ES3, ES4, 5 and 6 in TypeScript. Whereas in JavaScript, no support for compiling. In TypeScript, functions can have optional parameters. Whereas in JavaScript, this is not possible. In TypeScript, converted into JavaScript code to be understandable for browsers. JavaScript can be directly used in browsers. TypeScript has proper build setup, node package manager, is required for static type definitions. No build setup is required in JavaScript. What is JSX? JSX is an XML like syntax that can be embedded. It is intended to be turned into legitimate JavaScript, though the semantics of that transformation will vary depending on the implementation. TypeScript allows you to embed JSX, type, verify it and compile it to JavaScript immediately. JSX needs to be translated into a valid TypeScript. We use the JSX file with the .tsx extension. Define static typing. Static typing refers to a compiler having variables, parameters and object members that are recognizable at the compilation type. This helps in detecting early errors. Static typing is an important concept. Static typing is when the compiler enforces that the values use the same type. Here's an example. What is meant by type inference? When you don't specify an explicit type for variable, TypeScript can infer it. Type inference is the term for this. This is normally done during the declaration when the variables or parameters are initialized. TypeScript recognizes that the variable foo is a string, even if we don't mention string as a type. Here is an example. How to create objects in TypeScript? Objects are collection of keys and values that resemble a dictionary. The keys must be one of a kind. They resemble arrays and are sometimes referred to as associate arrays. An object type in TypeScript refers to any value with properties. It can be defined simply by specifying the properties and the kinds of these properties. As an example, explain different data types in TypeScript. Number. Both integer and floating point numbers are represented by the data type number. Boolean has true and false values. String. It is used to denote a string of characters. Void is usually applied to function return types. Null. It's used when an object isn't worth anything. Undefined indicates the value assigned to an uninitialized variable. Any. Any type of value can be assigned to a variable if declared with any data type. What are the benefits of using TypeScript? Compilation. JavaScript is an interpreted language. Thus, there is no need to compile it. As a result, it must be run to ensure authenticity. If there is an error, you write all the code only to find no output. As a result, you will have to spend hours looking for faults in the code. Error checking is provided via the TypeScript transpiler. If TypeScript detects any syntax mistakes, it will compile the code and generate compilation error. This aids in detecting errors before the execution of the script. The next benefit is it provides an optional type system for JavaScript code. When a client doesn't have a value for a parameter, he can pass null. Optional arguments are a feature of TypeScript. You can declare some optional arguments in the function by utilizing optional parameter features. 
so the decline does not need to supply a value to optional parameters. Strong static typing. JavaScript does not have a powerful static typing system. Through the TLS, TypeScript comes with an optional static typing and type inference system. The TLS can deduce the type of a variable defined with no type based on its value. TypeScript supports object-oriented programming. TypeScript supports classes, interfaces, inheritance, and other object-oriented programming principles. TypeScript supports type definition. Existing JavaScript libraries can use TypeScript type definitions. External JavaScript libraries are defined in TypeScript definition files. As a result, it can include these libraries in TypeScript code. How to install TypeScript? TypeScript is a JavaScript programming language for use in application. TypeScript extends JavaScript with optional types that support tools for large-scale JavaScript application in any browser or any host on any other operating system. To install TypeScript globally with Node Package Manager, which means you can run the TypeScript command from anywhere in your terminal. To install the latest stable version of TypeScript, you just need to run the command npm install g space TypeScript. This will install the latest version of TypeScript. What are decorators? A decorator is a type of declaration that can be used to decorate a class declaration, method, accessor, property, or argument. Decorators take the form expression, where expression must evaluate to a function that will be called with information about the decorated declaration when it is called at runtime. What are mixins? Combining simple or particle classes is a popular approach of constructing classes from reusable components. For languages like Scala, you may be familiar with the concept of mixins or characteristics. To extend a base class, the design relies on generics and class inheritance. The finest mixin support in TypeScript is provided through the class expression pattern. Explain classes in TypeScript. Classes are not supported in JavaScript, ES5 or earlier. This feature that TypeScript inherits from ES6. A class is a collection of items with similar characteristics, fields, methods, constructor, blocks, nested classes, and interfaces are all included in the classes. Below is the syntax to declare a class. In terms of whoops, a class is a template for producing objects. What is a namespace and how to declare it? The namespace is used to group functionalities logically to enable a single or a group of linked functionalities. A namespace can include interfaces, classes, functions, and variables. The namespace keyword followed by the namespace name can be used to construct a namespace. Curly brackets can be used to define all interfaces, classes, and other objects. Below is the syntax for namespace. Explain the components of TypeScript. Internally, the TypeScript language is separated into three layers. Each of these layers is further subdivided into language, compiler, and language services. Language, it is written in TypeScript and includes TypeScript language components. It includes syntax, keywords, and type annotations. Compiler, the TypeScript compiler converts TypeScript programs into JavaScript code. It also converts our TypeScript code to JavaScript code, parsing and type checking it. It provides information that allows editors and other tools to deliver greater assistance, capabilities like automated, refactoring and intellisense. It adds a layer of abstraction to the core compiler pipeline. What are the recent advancements in TypeScript? TypeScript 4.2 has been released and it includes more flexible type annotations, tougher checks and additional configuration choices and a few breaking changes. REST arguments can now be placed anywhere in triple type. In type error messages, Type aliases are no longer enlarged, resulting in a better developer experience. 
TypeScript 4.2 brings the language one step closer to its aim of accurately typing JavaScript at any size anywhere JavaScript is used. Describe as syntax in TypeScript. The as is an additional syntax in TypeScript for type assertion. It was introduced as the original syntax conflicted with JSX. While using JSX with TypeScript, only as style assertions can be used. Define Lambda function. TypeScript provides shorthand syntax for defining function expressions. A Lambda function is an anonymous function without a name. Below is an example for Lambda function. What are conditional types in TypeScript? Based on a condition given as a type relationship test, a conditional type chooses one of the two alternative types. When t can be assigned to u, the type is x, and when t can't, the type is y. Because the condition depends on one or more type variables, a conditional type t extends to u, x is to y and is either resolved to x or y or delayed, whether to resolve to x or y or to differ when t or u contains type variables is determined by whether the type systems has enough information to conclude that t is always assignable to u. What is an interface with reference to TypeScript? The interface defines the syntax for classes to follow. A class implementing an interface implements all its members. It can be referenced but not instantiated. TypeScript compiler uses an interface for type checking. What is a declare keyword in TypeScript? As JavaScript does not have TypeScript declaration, to use it in the TypeScript file without any compilation error, declare keyword is used. The keyword is used for ambient methods and declarations to define a variable that exists elsewhere. Now we will look at advanced level interview questions. What are object-oriented principles supported by TypeScript? All object-oriented principles, encapsulation, inheritance, polymorphism, and abstraction are supported by TypeScript. Encapsulation is a major component of object-oriented programming language and its method of structuring code so that each block of code has its own set of access points for external code. Polymorphism occurs when many class inherit from the same parent and override the same functionality. Each of those kit classes is now responsible for implementing a property or method, but they may do so it on their own unique way. Inheritance TypeScript makes creating an object model and inheritance chain a breeze to construct classes. Simply use the standard class keyword. Abstraction is a method of modeling objects in a system that separates the responsibilities of the classes or type from the code that inherits it. Explain index signatures in TypeScript. Index signatures interact with the key of and t of k. The type of an index signature argument must be either a string or a number. If your type has a string index signature, key of t will be a string or a number because in JavaScript we can access an object property using either string or numbers and t of string is simply the index signatures type. The index signature consists of the index name and its type in square bracket followed by colon and the value type. What are assert signatures? The assert signature features allows us to construct functions that operate as type guards as a side effect instead of returning their boolean result explicitly. After a search string, TypeScript has no way of knowing if you have guaranteed the type of input. To prevent this, most people just make the parameter input string, which is fine. But it also moves the type of checking problem somewhere and in circumstances where you just want to fail hard, having the option is beneficial. What is type assertion? Explain its types. A type assertion is similar to a typecast in other languages. 
but it does not do any additional data verification or restructuring. It has no effect on runtime and is only used by the compiler. There are two types of assertions. One is the as syntax, other is the angle bracket syntax. Below is the example for as syntax and angle bracket syntax. Explain how TypeScript files can be supported from node modules. TypeScript includes a series of declaration files. However, there are two drawbacks to using these declaration files with TypeScript. One is while upgrading TypeScript, we must deal with changes to TypeScript's built-in declaration files. And the other is customizing these files to meet the needs and the demands of project dependencies is difficult. A new feature like at the rate types was added that allows to override the specific built-in library. Then we can update TypeScript and the log file in dependency management ensuring that it utilizes the same version of the DOM types. As a result, we can update the types on our own schedule. Explain the TypeScript generics. TypeScript generics is a tool for creating reusable components in TypeScript. It builds a component that can interact with various data kinds. It enables users to consume these components while also using their own kinds. The identity function now has a type variable called type. This type allows us to capture the type of data the user supplies, for example, a number or a string, so that we can use it later. We are going to utilize type as the return type once more. Below is the syntax for TypeScript generics. What is recursive type aliases? The ability to recursively reference type aliases has always been eliminated. The reason for this is because each type aliases must be capable of substituting itself for whatever it aliases. Interfaces can be recursive, but their expressiveness is limited and type aliases cannot. That involves combining the two, creating a type aliases and extracting the type's recursive portions into interfaces. It's effective. TypeScript has no trouble working with the interfaces and the other object types because they introduce a level of indirection and their whole structure does not need to be eagerly built up. Explain tail recursion elimination on conditional types. When TypeScript identifies infinite recursion or any type expansions that take a long time and damage your editor experience. As a result, TypeScript includes heuristics to ensure that it doesn't run off the tracks while working with types that provide a lot of intermediate results. The trim left type removes spaces from the beginning of string like type. When provided a string type with a space at the beginning, trim left returns a reminder of the string to the user. Advanced TypeScript removes tail recursion from conditional types. It can prevent intermediary instantiations as one branch of conditional type is merely another conditional type. Explain the awaited type and promise improvements. This type is intended to represent activities such as await in async functions and the dot then method on promises, notably the way they recursively unwrap promises. Existing APIs such as JavaScript, built-ins like promise.all, promise.trace and others can benefit from the awaited type. In fact, some of promise.all's inference concerns provided as foundation for awaited. Promise.all combines certain traits with the awaited to produce far superior inference results. So with that, we have reached the end of this video. Thank you so much for being here. Keep learning and stay tuned to Simply Learn. Hi there, if you like this video, subscribe to the Simply Learn YouTube channel and click here to watch similar videos. To nerd up and get certified, click here.